Well, good day, everybody. Uh, how you all doing? Uh, I'm back today with a video of ETS2, and uh, we're taking this uh, uh, fire engine uh, from uh, in the Alistock, uh up to uh, Saint Petersburg. Uh, so this may not be all in the video, but hopefully get as much in it as I can. Um, and we're doing it in this Volvo VNL 670, which is a uh, pretty nice truck. Wow, AI yeah, Bound is getting mad. <laughs> um, Uh, but anyway, so there's a few things to talk about in this video. Um, first things about NVIDIA. Um, so basically, heard about this this morning. They have said that they're apparently paying back people that bought an NVIDIA GTX 970. $30 due to supposedly misadvertising the amount of VRAM it had by, I think, 500 megabytes. Uh, which is, I don't know, I don't know if it's worth them doing that really, because $30 is not a lot of money, and it's been almost two years since that video card came out, and um, the thing is, is that I bought this 960 at the start of this year, and it says almost everywhere it has 4 gigs of VRAM, whenever you're looking, um, says somewhere else that it's only got 3 gigs, but I don't know. I don't think that's an advertising problem, and I don't think it's an advertising problem with the, um... Um... You know, a fault in design, not so much fault in advertising, but oh well, whatever. Uh, but something else has happened, which is, I think, very good news, is... news um, is about Microsoft. Uh, a couple of lawsuits were issued against them. Uh, well actually a few, quite a few have been issued. Various ones have won. But various people are claiming various different things uh, which I'll be honest I agree with. You know, due to, because um, all, all of these, um, oh the claims, all the claims have a legitimate point in it and the one that to me has the best sort of evidence in it of claims is that it is a misadvertising product and Microsoft has not taken all um, you know all um, Sorry, it's just listening to this in the background, it's very hard to keep on my train of thought for some reason. Um, but basically this lawsuit you know, it was saying that Microsoft, the pop-up for the Windows 10 upgrade thing, um, is unlawful and not the right way of advertising. They didn't take every ne necessary step in that. And I mean, the defense to this is that the defense to that is Microsoft is well if a customer has a problem with upgrading they can contact the customer support center which think of it this way it is very easy to um it is extremely easy in fact to claim something 
but have no actual proof of it or that thing be true. Just just because Microsoft can say to the court, you know, uh, customer support is good, it's there if a customer has a problem. Microsoft customer support is one of the worst customer supports I've ever come across in my life. It's just completely useless. Uh, you know, they never ever respond to you on anything. Any response you get is absolutely uh, stupid and just un a waste of time even trying to um, ask them for help or more. Ask Google for help is what I've resorted to when I have a problem with a Microsoft related issue. Um, Um, but basically, uh, I mean, very easy for them to claim stuff, but to prove that, possible. I'd honestly like to see if they try to use that defense in court, uh, uh, as well as various others, that the court actually decides to try it out, and they can see for themselves what happens. And then I think, to be honest with you, they probably make a, the right decision. I mean, it's, I mean, I knew this was going to happen simply because you could tell from the very beginning that when Windows 10 was announced coming out on July 29 and you could upgrade for free um, until July 29th of next year of the next year which by the way when I'm recording this it's July 30th so you can't even upgrade for free anymore yet yet but you know um, and I could tell from the start it was going to be an aggressive tactic. I mean, no other Windows operating system ever has been released for free. Um, except perhaps you could say for 8.1 was an update to Windows 8, but they're technically the same, just one's fixed, so that's not really the same thing, you know. Um, and it was an optional, it wasn't forced or anything like that. Um, maybe it's part of Windows Update, I don't know. Um, you know, I upgraded to Windows 10 in November, personally I didn't have an issue, um, but I only did that then because I knew if I didn't do it anytime soon, it was probably going to get a whole lot worse, and it did. They started doing these forced upgrades where people would get these pop-up messages saying that an update has been scheduled, please close out to confirm this, you know. So then they started having to create these programs called Do Not Run Ten and things like that. Even my uh, my dad's friend was having this problem, uh, getting a forced upgrade window to Windows 10. And I had to call this IT man to help him solve it. You know, and uh, you know it's become such a problem now for so many people that it's starting to come back and bite Microsoft in the ass, you know? And, uh, frankly, it's a good thing, because it's what they deserve. I personally don't have any respect for Microsoft at all. Um, ever since they laid off their entire test team. Um, you know? And I thought ever since then, things were gonna go downhill with them, and it really has, you know? I mean, Windows 10, the point here is not that Windows 10 is bad. Windows 10 is actually a decent operating system. In my view, it is not as good as Windows 7. And this is simply because the user interface in Windows 10 is somewhat non-logical. Like in Windows 7, you could uh, click on the start menu, you right click on computer and you pretty much get to the control panel. Or you could directly can access the control panel from the start menu. Now you can't in Windows 10. You have to click on the start menu and search for the control panel. There's two different ones in there and to go through checking which one's which, you know. It took me like three attempts to find the right one, you know, and I just, and there's no direct access to the computer information anymore, you know. I, it's really difficult to find it now. It's in settings somewhere, you know. The several things that they did which I don't personally agree with 
you know, but overall it's a decent operating system. Can speed up performance a little bit of an old PC that's struggling a bit. Um, but no, Ban had such performance issues with Windows 7, uh, last PC with, due to viruses or something. Um, then I probably was stuck with Windows 7 until, you know, it ran out of uh, life, you know. And well, you know, I think now generally that, um, you know, Think of it this way, they say this is their last operating system, and I'm starting to believe it is, you know, in a way. But it just sounds all like a hoax, you know. Um, and I, I half wouldn't be surprised if um, in five years' time, uh, people from Microsoft just knock on the do our do my door at this house and say, We own this house, get out, you know. You signed this agreement five years ago and you upgrade to Windows 10. The said, in five years' time, you give us access to your address, your property, and all your personal savings, and all those things, and you must leave now, because we own this house, you know. That really would not surprise me. And if that happened, do you know what I think I'd do? Well, I'd probably refuse, and probably would call the police, and I would probably just call every agency I could, and probably just get to shoot all these Microsoft people supposedly claim this um, you know so you know I, I think at the end of the day I think Microsoft should personally just stop as a company unless they're gonna do operating systems should pretty much just stop at a company because think of it this way that manager doesn't need any more money you know those management team made you know, shit tons of money over the years. They don't need any more money. They don't need to make money out of service or any of that stuff. So, as far as I'm concerned, they could shut down now. And yeah, they get our stick for it, but at least, you know, they don't get themselves into any more trouble. But they're probably not going to now. You know, and someone else has said that uh, they reckon that Microsoft is going to eventually, through Windows 10 updates, make Steam up make Steam, the game platform, so bad that it's unusable and people have to use Windows Game Upper Game Windows Game Store thing, which is a lot of crap to be honest. Uh, you know, it doesn't work properly. You know, trying to don't don't buy the Microsoft Windows 10 game thing, it's pretty much absolute shit. Uh, you know, barely, you can't get 1080p, supposedly run full window mode, yeah, in like 480p and it looks like other shit. You know, graphics don't make sense, none of the gameplay is the same, it's just, and then you've got to buy it as well, you know, and, uh, oh god. I just disabled the entire thing, to be honest. I just disabled every shortcut to what I could find. And I physically tried to remove from the operating system, but couldn't for some reason, I can't remember why, but... Oh uh, yeah, it's a very long story about Windows 10 and all the problems, and uh, you know, what I really wish would happen is the Microsoft were forced to uh, shut down as a company, to be honest, because they don't deserve to, you know, their company. And I honestly want to receive, I don't know, 200 quid, no, a thousand dollars for every customer that's upgrading and had a problem. Which includes me, <laughs> you know, and I would more than likely, and you know, I think they could easily do it because they make so much every year. A thousand dollars for every customer is nothing to them, so you know, that'd be nice. Where are we at the moment? We are. It doesn't really relieve the stress. We're six nine nine miles from destination. We've only just gone past Brest. Uh, yeah. Free town, that is. <laughs> yeah. uh, going all the way up to St. Petersburg. Uh, we probably won't do the entire journey in this video, to be honest, but, uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, you know, uh, I'd like to say a little bit about Hit Film 4. A couple of videos now have gone out uh, with bad editing software. Uh, it's perfect for what I need. 
I don't see a need to buy any additional packs at the moment. I uh, learn new things about it every day. And uh, yeah, it's very good. So I don't see a reason to get anything like Sony Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere or anything like that. No need to for me. So. Also, <laughs> I've also learned, um, you know, uh, oh, there's another thing I forgot to mention as well. Yeah, this video is being recorded. I'm using, like I was in the last OM side video, you'll probably see that video first for this one, uh, the NVIDIA syncing codec uh, process in OBS. But, you know, it's not actually affecting game performance a lot. Still getting decent frames and. Uh, Surprisingly, as the video records at 60 FPS, even in on um, side which doesn't get anywhere near that, you don't see it. You know, you still see 60 FPS roughly as on the video, so it still looks plus smooth to you, no matter what. Uh, as far as I can, as far as I can tell. But um, you know, hopefully, when I stream tonight uh, and I use this, uh, hopefully, improve performance a little bit because. You notice while streaming, while it's trying to use the CPU, that your performance, especially with an older CPU like mine, the i7-2600, even overclocked, it kind of reduces performance a bit, uh, so... I mean, with the streaming thing, I mean, took a couple of weeks off simply because I basically wasn't in the mood for it for a bit and uh, didn't really want to stream at all. Uh, so I'm returning on July 30th, which will have gone hopefully, but will have gone by the time you see this video. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully we get back into that and. Uh, be able to do roughly four streams a week. One Tuesday night, Thursday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. That's what I hope. You know, I think four streams a week is perfectly good. It's more than enough, and uh, yeah, it's only like two hours and a bit I stream, but you know, I know other streamers like uh, Shishuma, or whatever his name is. X. Juma. X. Uma, I think his name is. You know, he only streams. He only streams like two hours, but yeah, you know, his his audience love him. You know, you don't have to stream for absolutely hours and then to, you know, be liked. You know, as long as you don't stream like half an hour at one time or ten minutes another time, you have a fairly consistent like on those schedule where you stream roughly the same amount of time. You know, you're fine. So, so yeah. The thing is with streaming is I do not intend to. <laughs> I really don't intend to do it full time. It's not something that personally I would want to do is sit there for absolutely hours. Even though it'd be cool some days I guess, rainy days you sit inside for hours and then just playing video games. Cool as that is, you know, not personally what I really would. Not personally what I would want to uh, do for um, every day. So, you know, just do it for a bit of fun, entertain people. That's all I want, really. Not a lot to ask for, really. Try and get up to 62 here in a second. Change down the gear. You know what I was about to say before I went off on something else is I've learned now how to basically uh, modify truck mods or any other mod. Uh, but basically truck mods. Basically learn how to change the engine power and uh, change gearbox ratio. 
And I've done it with quite a few trucks actually. Well, I did it with this truck. I mean, this engine I'm running currently, standard is uh, like uh, 550 horsepower. I put up to 580, and uh, what actually makes the difference in ETS2 is not what says the horsepower is, that doesn't make the difference, it's the torque. Put we'll torque up by like 3 400 to basically replicate how, how powerful it would be actually in real life. And I wish I could do that with in game trucks, because some of the low powered engines, you know, really need a lot more torque, in my view, to replicate what they actually can pull in real life. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's going well. And uh, I actually decided to modify that Scandia series while I drove in a video a couple of weeks ago. Didn't change horsepower reading, but I upped the torque by like two, three hundred uh, foot pounds of torque or something, and drove it since. It actually made a decent difference. It can, it pulls how I think the truck would pull in real life with that engine, you know, which is quite well. You know, three hundred and eighty-one horsepower. You know. See trucks pulling like 20, 30 tons with that, but with no problem at all. Round down, so you know. Now, why would that car just do that? That's just stupid. And I've got back into playing pro mods a lot more on my other profile um, with the Freightliner Coronado, which the latest model or version of that truck is not the best. Mainly I say because some of the textures are a bit odd and uh, you can't adjust the... Basically you're viewing the cab like this. You can't... Uh, you can't uh, push it back as far as you used to which is kind of a shame but it's still drivable and good. Um, and I enjoy driving that round on the ProMod scenery because ProMod scenery is incredible. And I really look forward to when 2.1 comes out because it's going to have a lot more in it. A lot more north of Norway and Spain and the UK as well. Even though technically MHA does that as well, Pro Mods does it good as well. I mean, much as I consider adding Pro Mods and TSM on this main profile, in a way, I want to keep this main profile with uh, just MHA and Rust Map. Uh, did I say Pro Mods and TSM? I mean Pro Mods and Rust Map. Yeah, keep this profile for. Uh, Basically, MHA map and uh, Rust map, and then my other profile for Rust map and ProMods, and then the other profile for Dutch map. I started an entire new profile actually in um, America Truck Sim, uh, so make it a more successful career profile and level up quicker than it did before when I tried it, but uh, yeah. So yeah, things are going good at the moment, so overall, so I'm happy. Yeah, that just froze quite a bit there for a couple of seconds. <laughs> Didn't, a couple of seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but when it's there, you think, is the game going to crash? Is the game going to crash? I mean, I've seen game freezes in this game last for like uh, a minute and a half at times, you know. Be pretty bad. Uh, and uh, updates on the roof situation. I don't know why it's so big to me. I just really want a new router. <laughs> but, um, hopefully, um, I mean, people, hopefully, have one from Walker's Day. Uh, won't we'll go into why, to be honest, but hopefully, we'll, we won't. Um, I sure hope do, because there's one fast. This one better down upload speed, to be honest, so can record these videos at high quality, to be honest, even though they look decent now, just high quality and, uh, longer videos as well uh, and stream at better quality and to be honest in our world I would stream at uh, 2800 kbs at 60 frames per second at I don't know, 720 or 1080p but real world what people can watch 
what I would actually like to stream at is 720p, uh, 2500 kilobytes per second at 40, at 50 or 48 FPS. Um, that's why I want to stream at, to be honest. Uh, that's the best of all quality I can find, so. You know, it's cool. Well, we're only here. So it's 500 miles. That is pretty much all through uh, the book. You exclude Belarus, uh, Russia. We may just finish here the next few stuff. I don't know. Uh, don't know if it's worth really seeing here for the next 500 miles and you just watching me here and whatever, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. This NVIDIA codec option in OBS would be perfect if you had like uh, to if you had SLI to be honest because uh, you just wouldn't it would render so easily. I mean it's good with one card, but uh, it would render, render very easily with uh, two cards. So you know. I was talking, uh, I was actually making a, I've been doing this a lot more recently, making parts list on PC parts picker to see how much various things have cost, and uh, I've been making this parts list over the last lot, um, last few months called Ult the Ultima Kill Game PC, and put in basically what I would want if I had all the money. Uh, to total cost comes out something like I think it's four thousand eight hundred and eighty eight pounds and thirty two pence. Um, and uh, you know, quite a lot. But uh, for that, I mean, for that amount, you're getting uh, i7 6900 K, uh, which is pretty damn good. Uh, processor and MSI motherboard. Uh, so like six terabytes of SSD so storage, uh, five uh, Samsung uh, 850 Evo one terabytes and uh, two HyperX 480 gig PC PCI SSDs which are super quick, which the operating system will probably go on, um, and the other drives will probably go in raid. Uh, I think 850 watt power supply and. Uh, Two 1080 uh, Zotac Extreme Editions. So yeah, it'd be pretty damn overkill, but it'd be very good. Um, like uh, very good uh, performance. Let's just say, probably an understatement. That is of the century. Oh, and it's still not really here in Russia. Sure, that'd be. Sh I doubt that'd be the case in real life, but okay.
Is this guy ever gonna move? If I let the, uh, <laughs> if I let the, um, barking brake go now, it's just gonna go right into the back of him, because I've got, uh, 25 tons, but I'm just willing to, uh, smash into him, so. You better move, man. You better move. <laughs> this barking brake's gonna explode if you... I had, I had lights on. Come on. Oh, they custom horns. Oh, sounds good. I think there is in spin tires. I know because I played it recently. That's been in there. One of the things I've driven. that roundabout then. <laughs> no need for it. Well, okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna stop this video here. So, uh, you know. I hope you uh, enjoy it. Or oh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, do my shorty now, come like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, till next time, uh, salute.